actually have. Like, that's what I really want to know is because as much as we've applauded him as a guru and as all of this, whether or not it's him or Les Steed and they were paired together, they were not, you know, they were not hired at the same time. Sneed came in with Fisher under the previous regime. He stayed on board as McVeigh came on. So naturally, the GM is probably more on the hot seat than McVeigh. I get that. But my pushback to this. You had issues using Todd Gurley. We don't know if it's injuries. We didn't know if it was personality, but you had this dude who looked like a Hall of Fame running back kind of fall off on the cliff. And some of that was injury, which we knew from the combine. He was going to have issues in the second contract with his knee. Some of it was scheme. We talked about it before, about him not being used as a catcher. Talked about, you know, getting away from him, letting games with leads. And some of it was just mental. I mean, you could see the body language on the sideline. Gurley was sometimes not engaged. Sometimes was just eh, kind of going through the motions. Either way, man. McVeigh has now lost a star running back. He's pushed a star running back out. Two top flight receivers between Watkins and, and Cooks. Um, the defense has been overhauled a few times. The defensive coordinator, Wade Phillips, is no longer there, which, you know, from what I understand, was mutual. But he doesn't have that experience to fall back on. He doesn't have the Wade Phillips training wheels anymore. Like, this is Sean McVay's organization and team. And for as much credit as he got when he first came on board – getting them into the playoffs, and then getting them to the Super Bowl. I don't know if he took enough heat for last year's kind of underwhelming season missing the playoffs. Again, some of that was injuries. Some of that was the division getting better, but the division is still going to be really good. The Seahawks haven't taken a major step back. The 49ers haven't taken a step back. Now, we know the Super Bowl hangover could have hit the Niners, but... You never know. So I still expect them to be good. The Cardinals are a team a lot of people are saying is going to be a surprise team just based off the moves that they've made this offseason getting Hopkins and all that. But I think this is Kenny, so let's see what he got to say. Hello, caller. What is your name and location, please? Uh, MC What's Fuck, a.k.a. Daddy D. Dirt. I'm sorry, my name's Kenny. What's good, Kenny? How you doing, man? Uh, not too good. I broke my childhood PlayStation uh last night, dropped it uh right on the front and cracked shit out of it. And my PS3 controller isn't working, so I'm just like, <sighs> but I got paid today, so I guess that's a win. So does that mean I also got paid today? <laughs> that awkward money when you bust them out getting money to the dude you owe money to hey, first off, I oh my man I'll, hey, I'll get you in two weeks relax <laughs> but yeah my man I'm gonna pay my plan right now is this what child support feels like yeah pretty much but yeah, man. So I'm I, my check. I'm just like, oh, it's gone. But yeah, man. So I really kind of started the show just talking about the Rams. You know, obviously the trade went down. So you know, first and foremost, what do you make of the Cooks trade? Who won it? And also, the final point of it is, what sort of what what sort of leash is Sean McVay on now that we're seeing all this kind of sort of turnover with the Rams? And finally, do you even want to see the Rams on Hard Knocks again? Honestly, man, when it comes to McVay, it's not looking too great. The GM will probably 
get a longer leash. I well, don't think like, so because yeah, he's the what? one who gave Gurley and Cooks and Ogletree and Quinn all his money, all that money, and then traded him. But he also, but he also got you Jalen Ramsey. That's true. But those those contracts were questionable. I mean, it cost them four million just to move, you know, Cooks and and Gurley's, you know, saying that they owe him money, and Matthews was saying they owe him money, but. But yeah, essentially they had to pay him out on his, some of his guarantees after releasing him. So, you know, I th- I think and and he came in with the Fisher era. So for me, I I think he's closer to the chopping block. But either way, I, I just see it as like, okay, you had a team, right? You already pushed out two Pro Bowl caliber receivers. You already misused, mishandled whatever happened with Gurley. It happened. He's no longer there. You know, the Hall of Fame defensive coordinator who was your backbone and, and training wheels is, is no longer there. So, you know, I look at that and just say, at some point, the common denominator is McVay, right? And and in, with all the struggles of golf, he got a lot of credit for saving golf. Well, now, if golf's regressed, how much of that is on McVay? So there's a lot to it, but but ultimately, I just I just think, not that he's immediately on the hot seat, but I think it's coming. Mm. Yeah. See, here's my issue. The GM, he got you the players. He got contracts made and signed. You know, it comes out to the coach executing on the field. If they don't execute. And remember that. I mean, then you kind of have to. Yeah, have I to agree with you. First. I was going to say, he got the Donald deal done. He got got, the Donald deal done. They got, exactly. Which was a big one. Yeah, exactly. With the Raiders. And if you look at it, Marcus Peters is just a better fit in Baltimore anyway. If you look at that defense, the way the Rams defense is set up, it's better to have a great corner, a great defensive lineman, and a bunch of pieces everywhere else. And if you're not, if you're going to look at, like that, well, okay, he got rid of Gurley. Well, now you could build through the draft because he got you a second round pick for a guy with a history of concussions who's been traded everywhere he's been. And because of his size and his concussion history, you know, you're going to get some value, but not a lot. And it's not like the offense was using him. So, realistically, if you look at Sneed, he's done everything he's needed to do. He's, you, that was the quarterback. I felt like that was the quarterback. He got the deal done. But we talk about done. culture so much done. on the show, and it's like, you know, he even said it this week. I ought to use Gerald Everett better. It's like, okay, like I appreciate the amount of accountability you have in yourself, but at the same time, like at some point the leash runs out and you can't keep saying like, oh, I got to do this better. I got to do that better and not do it. Like, because as a star so player, speed is gonna last longer. because as a star player, it's like, do you want to go there? No, I'm having with Gurley, Cooks, Watkins. Being misused, and then essentially being shipped out, like I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Yeah, but I mean, if you're you got the deal done, and you look at uh, what's his face um, McVay, they keep giving you people and chances, and like it's not like there's no talent on that roster. So if they're gonna go through all that to do all that. And you're still not winning. It's clearly you, because the Rams ain't hurting for talent. They brought back Michael Brockers. They got Jalen Ramsey. You know the whole Fowler situation. Like they, they, he just they keep finding ways to make, you know, to not go bankrupt somehow. So, so you you, know, you take the so you take the do. Cooks trade as a win for the Rams, which. You know, I, I I agree with as well. I think it's a win considering it's, Hopkins also went for a second. Money, how much money did they get off their books? Um, they didn't get a lot off. They actually have a because they he had a lot of guarantees, so they still have a lot of dead money. Well, yeah, they got dead money, but you got that situation out, and now you can build through the draft. And realistically, they only were going to use. I mean, this receiver class stuff. is stacked. There's going to be a starting caliber big receiver in the second round. 
which is exactly my point. You can get a Mims, a Pittman, a a, a Golden, a, a, the kid out of Colorado whose name I can't pronounce. LaVisca Chanel. Wow. Have you been practicing? I've been to, I've been to say his name. I watch basketball football. <laughs> you know, just just because UCLA doesn't produce any receivers doesn't mean nobody else does. Ouch. Tell it to Arizona. But, uh, nah, Arizona. Arizona even produced somebody. I don't know. But I just, when it comes to kind of situations like this, Snead delivered on everything he's, you know, and everything I wanted to get done. And honestly, I think McVeigh's whole shtick is running really tired. Well, especially because we got these other these other young, you know, McVay clones. <laughs> so, you know. And if you look at the Niners, I think it's Shanahan, how he built that team. He's built it quiet. He's been quiet, and he's built the team and made some splash trades. But when it comes down to it, that team is set up. And he didn't kind of gas the expectations. With that, with, with that, has to win, or he's going to be looked at as a failure. With that, you know, rumors, reports, speculation is Hard Knocks. You know, wants to bring on both the Chargers and the Rams. You know, my take on it was pretty much that's like when the little brother wants to go to a specific school, and the school is like, "Uh, oh, we'll give you an offer if you can finesse your older brother." So, what do you make of that situation? I was listening to when you said that. I was like, that's spot on. Because, I mean, it's worked a couple of times. USC, you know, they got uh, Marcus, not Marcus Simmons, but uh, the guy, Malcolm Smith. And his brother played that too, but his brother wasn't as good. I look at Notre Dame, they got him, they got uh, Manti Teo, but they also got his cousin. And you look at places like that. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes, like, Oregon got two brothers and one of them transferred. But why can't the Chargers just get, like, one ounce of anything? Like... No one... Are you going to watch an hour of the Chargers? I'm not going to watch an hour of the Chargers and Rams, so I'm irrelevant. No, no, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. They can't get... Because you know when the same channel that the Lakers have Spectrum? Yeah. The Rams also have, like, little 30-minute shows on Spectrum, too. Nobody watch that shit. That's what I'm saying. Like and I'm nobody's watching that. Corner, Michael Jackson, the Mexican dude, like, but even then, like, or no, Michael Davis, whatever his name was, like, nobody watches that. They don't do a good enough profile. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, I, I that, just, uh, I just think ultimately, like, nobody's watching it either way. So, why try so hard? Why not just, they, you know, honestly, try to make it, the, try the to make it more intimate. The biggest, Sadly, the Raiders, well, that's because things aren't intimate right now. Like, people are scared and shit. The Raiders are probably your best bet. But they just did them, so they're not going to you know, not gonna be able to do them again. You might, you might, you might, you might have to do them again. You, you can't. They're not the Oakland Raiders. They're the Vegas Raiders. I don't think you... Who went better to cover that transition? Yeah, I don't... I, don't, I think, I think it's like... To, I think it's like two or three team. years. I think it's like two or three years, something like that. Like, like the Rams. I, I don't think the Rams ha- even have to do it. I think they just have an option. Like they can say yes or no, but HBO wants them. But yeah, it just seems lazy to me. Like I, I think you could, you could, you could make a series out of Anthony Lynn and Joey Bosa and like whatever else happens with that Chargers team. Like. You can put together a compelling series of that. Like you don't need McVay and the Rams to do that. Like we already got Gruden last year. Like we got the Rams a few years ago. Like give the Rams a few more years before you make them go through that shit show again. But yeah, man. So yeah. I'm just I'm telling you that people are hurting for content and. You're already forced. Honestly, I would rather than do something on the LA Wildcats. Bro, you really got to get off the XFL, bro. 
Stop it. I would. I have more. Stop it. I have more interest in that than the, than the Chargers. Conflict of interest.